We're here at the uh, Nixon Library in Yorba Linda on the eve of President Nixon's 97th birthday, and we've just completed the first of a series of Nixon Legacy Forums that will be sponsored by the Foundation and the Library. And one of the participants uh, was the Honorable James Cavanaugh, who was uh, the Associate Director of the Domestic Council for uh, Health Policy. Um, and we have also with us Alex Tallarita, who is the Nixon Fellow at Whittier College, President Nixon's alma mater. And uh, he just did a paper uh, during his uh, year's fellowship on healthcare policy. So we thought this was the perfect meeting of the minds and marriage of expertises and interests. Uh, start with Jim. You back First, in the let me say formally hello. I've read your paper. Someone forwarded it to me a couple weeks ago. It's a terrific piece of work. Thank you very much. I was really glad to see it. Well done. Thanks. Uh, back in the day, in 1968, uh, or in 69, you were, uh, uh, well, tell us where you were and why you wanted to work for Richard Nixon, if you did. Well, I did. I was at uh, Department of Health, Education, and Welfare as Deputy Assistant Secretary. Uh, Elliot Richardson was the Secretary, and I was working on some health policy issues, particularly a, uh, uh, a piece of health manpower legislation that was sort of st tied up in the Senate, and we were trying to work that through. And actually, I was in uh, Elliot's office on a Friday evening about 6.30, and he took a call from the White House, nodded up and down a couple of times, hung up the phone and said, are you tied up tomorrow morning? I said, not that I know of. And he said, would you be at the White House at 9.30 tomorrow morning? A fellow by the name of Ken Cole would like to talk to you about getting some help on developing uh, the president's health plan. Would you be willing to do it? And I said, well, I'd love to do it. And he said, be at the northwest, southwest gate at 9.30 tomorrow morning, and they'll take it from there. And that's how I arrived the rest, at the White House. The rest is history. Yes. Do you remember your first meeting with the president? I don't remember my first meeting with the president. The longer I was there, I, of course, got to see him a lot more. I do remember a, I, I remember being on a couple of trips. I went on Air Force One to a couple of events that involved some things I had worked on. I do remember a meeting, which may have been the first meeting, in the Oval Office, where I got called into a meeting to provide some amplification on a, on a proposal that I had put forward for a presidential meeting in Los Angeles. And it was for the president to meet with the uh, officers of the American Cancer Society before their annual meeting at the Biltmore Hotel in Los Angeles. And um, someone from Dwight, uh, Dwight Chapin's office called, asked if I'd come down to the president's office. So I went down and Nell Yates ushered me in. And I'm thinking, I wonder what this is really all about. And Dwight said, the president would like to hear a little bit more about this event you've proposed. So I told him what I knew about it. And I remembered saying, and they're going to have Da, da 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 hundreds of people in the audience. And he looked at me and said, we well, you know the bowl, the Biltmore Bowl at the Biltmore, only holds 483 people. And I may have said 504. <laughs> I mean, it was, and, uh, and that, I, it's the first recollection I recall. Not the first time I saw the president. I uh, was in college and went to a local rally at a local movie theater and one afternoon in a town called Marstown, New Jersey, in North Jersey, when he was out campaigning for his second term as vice president during the Eisenhower administration. You uh, talked about the, uh, in the forum, uh, you talked about the, uh, the Nixon health care policy <coughs> that failed passage, as Alex has done some study of this. Can you sort of give us uh, a, a, an overview of would have, could have, what you know, what would have been, and what could have been, and what, what's what uh, because it isn't what we're going through today. Well, that program, if enacted, would have fixed the problem in my view, and it had a very good chance of being enacted. The president was quite serious. The instruction he gave to Cap and to B about this what was he wanted. Cap Weinberger. Yeah, and what he wanted was a program that would meet the test be public and private, cover the people that needed coverage. Yes, would provide a mandate, and he was willing to accept that. But he wanted it uh, done in such a way that it would pass the Congress. And, and Cap, and we talked back and forth, and Cap had a great working group within the department. 
and they put together a program. Came over, uh, helped CAP a little bit with a decision memo that you know they, we typically do. CAP had done most of it. We provided some refinement to it. When in the present, he checked off the boxes of what he wanted and what he didn't want. And we were to go to the program, and it was in the 1974 State of the Union message, and the actual message with the health bill went up about 10 days later. And um, it got off to a very good start. And then what? Then it came a cropper. Well, um, what happened was that Kennedy, who was at least providing lip service to the fact that he wanted to cooperate with Mills over on the House side, and we believed, and the people we had as emissaries talking back and forth to his staff, felt that he was moving ahead with it until he had the meeting with the presidents of the uh, key unions, Andy Bye Miller from the AFL-CIO, and it wasn't Walter Ruther by then, I, I guess, and it wasn't Hoffa, whoever the UAW president was then. And they said, look, you know, we've negotiated these terms, they're, they're hard, they're fast, we think we can get a better deal we think we can get a better deal if the government takes the whole plan over. So that's what we want. And they had wanted it before our time in Washington. They've wanted it ever since, and they want it now, today. Alex, this is your shot. Do, uh, uh, based on your research and uh, your knowledge of the topic, uh, if you had one question, you have one question. What do you want to know from Jim Cavanaugh? Basically, uh would we be in this health care crisis today if this plan would have passed? No. That's really So it would have uh, look, looked at, uh, over the course of time, what we had proposed, what the Nixon administration had proposed. It, it wouldn't have all worked. There would, have, there would have been a period of trial and error or, or no, I, a subsequent... No, I, I, uh, I think it all would have it, worked, yeah. I, I think the variable now that's hard to calculate is what the cost would be and, and how, you know, that would be treated today. Um, but didn't you, know, you say it could have been done for the exorbitant sum in different dollars of in, $5 million? In 1974 yeah. dollars is $5 billion of additional federal spend, yeah. which was a big number, but it was a staggering number. Hmm. It was that a doable is, number. A doable, doable number, yeah. Uh, what do you think the Nixon legacy in health policy will be? Well, I think it'll be, um, for the Gan cancer initiative, <clears throat> I think um, it's one that he felt str strongly about. Um, I think for people who follow health issues, who follow health policy, who follow the history of health care programs in this country, I think his legacy among the thoughtful people in that group, academics, others, I think will be fairly good. Um, if they can get by the academic view of Nixon generally, which you know has not been favorable in many quarters, I think that people that realistically take a look at what his program had look at it favorably. I think it surprises people to this day that that would come from him because, as I said upstairs, here's a president who for his whole political career, going back to 1946, opposed programs like Medicare composed programs like compulsory health insurance. Now, his program in 1974 was not a compulsory program, but it was a pretty constant program. It had some mandates in it. And there weren't a lot of ifs, ands, or buts if you know you wanted to, you weren't going to get out of it if you were an employer. Now, it had some, it was not a total federal program. It had some subsidies from the federal government and it had some state programs involved in it. Jim, Alex, thank you very much. Good to be with you. Alex, again, congratulations on a great Thank paper. You. Thank you very much. Yeah.